today. He's worthy today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for anything today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you at all? Hallelujah. He is so good to us. He woke us up this morning. He gave us breath in our bodies today. Hallelujah. He gave us strength to stand on our own two feet. Hallelujah. Are you thankful? Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. It's for you today. Hallelujah. 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 God's got something for you today in this place. Hallelujah. All you got to do is respond to him. That's all he asks. Just respond to me. Just love on me. I want to love on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. I'm so excited about what God's doing, Brother Tom. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about what God's going to do. Amen. We just want to take a few minutes to shake each other's hand. We want to welcome our guest today. We're so excited that you're here. Hallelujah. Let's just shake each other's hand and, and make each other welcome today. going to serve you today. If you have an offering, tithes and offering, amen. We want to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for another opportunity to give, God. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver today, God. In the name of Jesus, everyone said amen. Hallelujah. You go to them today, God.
Thank you, Jesus. So excited about what God's doing. Amen. We got several things coming up to be aware of. Uh, we have a yard sale June, July the 22nd. Uh, if you still haven't brung your stuff, uh, anything that's good that you want to further the kingdom of God with, uh, we've taken all donations in the youth room. Uh, remember uh, the what was the other thing the flyer you sent out back to school hey amen we don't have that up there yet right what what was it um, we're having a back to school block party uh, just to celebrate all of our kids going back to school and we're going to be taking donations for that um, and we'll announce more of it a little bit later on and send out more texts. But um, that is Saturday, August the 12th, and Sunday, August the 13th. We're going to have a back-to-school service. So that will be uh, Saturday, August 12th is the block party, and sa Sunday, August 14th, 13th is the Sunday school service for the kids. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we're excited about the legacy uh, let's throw that up there right quick Sister Brianna Beauty for Ashes Legacy October 20th through 22nd it's going to be a mighty move of God amen we're excited for that we're excited for what pastor's teaching on amen the, the temple prayer Hallelujah. God is doing a mighty work in this house. We're so excited to have our guests walk in today. Thank you for, for making a part, making us a part of your day today. God's going to bless us today. Can we just love him? Can we just lift our hands? Can we just close our eyes? Can we just thank him for what he's doing in this place right now? We love you today, God. We praise you today, God.
Come on, hallelujah. There's no other name. The Bible says there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. It's in that precious name of Jesus. It's in that mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to leave this place the same way you came. If depression's been knocking on your door, God's got peace for you today. He defeated death, hell, and the grave just for you today. If you need a healing in your body, God's able. He defeated diabetes. Come on, somebody. He defeated Lyme disease. Come on, somebody. He defeated every sickness, sin, and disease. He is that peace that passeth all understanding. All you got to do is call on that name. There's something about when you speak the name of Jesus. The Bible says if you'll lift up that name, it draws him to you. He wants that personal relationship with you today. He's hungry for your touch, for you to talk to him, for you to love on him. But he wants to love on you too. Hallelujah. In a world that's torn with torment, confusion. Don't know whether they're a man or a woman anymore. Come on, somebody. Jesus. The spirit of the enemy. He is truth today. Will you get, let him give you revelation? Will you let him speak to you today? That's all he wants is just you to respond to him. If they will, if they'll sing just a little bit more of that, if you just lift your hands and close your eyes and just respond. You might not have ever felt what you're feeling in this place before, but if you'll just respond to him, that's just God. God loves you today. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, you have the power. You have the power, God. You live the love. Come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 the most beautiful name that I know. You're the angel.
Hallelujah. Why don't somebody praise him right now? Well, why don't somebody just lift him up? Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, my Redeemer, he's alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I speak that name, I said when I speak that name, devil's got to back up. Sickness got to back up. Come on. When I speak that name. Hallelujah. If there's one thing the devil's scared of, it's that name. Because that name is higher than anything else. It's higher than anything else. It's powerful name. When I speak Buddha, I don't feel nothing. When I speak Harry Krishna, I don't feel nothing. But when I say Jesus, I feel something. I feel something. I feel something. Hallelujah. Because that name is powerful. Hallelujah. When I speak that name, when I call on that name, hallelujah. When I was in school and I was in a fight and somebody's getting the best of me, I had some brothers I could call on. Hallelujah. I had a sister named Sammy. Everybody was scared of Sammy. Sammy would put them on the run. But I'm going to tell you what, when I'm fighting spiritual things, when I'm fighting things coming against me, I got a name I can call on. I said I got a name I can call. I don't have to face it myself. I don't have to do it myself, praise God. Hallelujah. He already told me he'll be with me to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands. Singers will be dismissed today. Children's church can be dismissed today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a day, what a day, what a day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Oh, what an hour we're living in. Praise. I, I've never seen it like it is. But you know what? My Bible says darker the night the greater the light praise god hallelujah glory to god glory to god hallelujah my 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 if you're in this place today and you need something from god i'm gonna tell you the devil can't stop you i said the devil can't stop you he ain't got that much power praise god Listen, he ain't got that. If, if a man had a legion of devils in him, he couldn't stop him. Come on. Hallelujah. You know who's going to stop you from getting what you need today? It ain't the devil. It ain't the world. It's you. It's you. Praise God. So you know what? Today, if you get you out of the way and let God get in the way, the devil will run away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, if you'll get out of the way, tell your stinking flesh to get out of the way. The king of glory is coming in. The king of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, I am super excited. Hallelujah. I got about a big old pages of notes. Hallelujah. So don't be scared. Hallelujah. They're 28 font. Hallelujah. You could probably see them from where you're at. Praise God. I don't know how much I'm going to stay with them, but whatever God has is what I want. That's got to be your attitude. I did not come just to be seen. I come for God to work on me. Praise God. Oh, we sang that children's song, He's still working on me. To make me what I need to be. It only took a week to make the moon and stars. I don't know, but he's still working on me. Some of you don't know that version. Praise God, but he's working on me. 
He works on you when you're asleep. He works on you when you're awake because God will finish what he started. I said God will finish what he started. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got to set up here today and it's, it's representing the tabernacle in the wilderness. And, and it is always in types and shadows that God used. God, God will give you a physical picture to show you a spiritual thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people say, I got to see it before I can believe it, or I got to see it. But you know what? God showed us way back, way back when it all started, how to get to his presence, how to get to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I come to get to him. I want to be like David. I'm after you, Lord. I'm after you, Lord. If you have your Bibles today, let's open to 1 Timothy 2 and 1. 1 Timothy 2 and 1. If you'll help me, we'll make it through it pretty fast. If you drag me, we'll be here for a while. So are you going to help me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you'll help push me, praise God. When you push a car up a hill by yourself, it takes a little longer. Praise God. 1 Timothy 2 and 1, and it reads, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayer, and intercessory, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Glory to God. First of all, first of all, you know what? First is still first. It ain't second. It ain't third. It ain't fourth. But first, praise God. Supplication. No, and supplication is simply this humbleness. Humble. Humble. You know what? If there's anything we have in our hours, a lot of arrogant people, a lot of stubborn people, a lot of stiff-necked people, and but you know what? You can't come to God that way. There is a way to get to the presence of God. There is a way for God to receive you. And if you come any that way like that, he won't receive you. But when you God sees humbleness in your heart and humbleness and humble yourself to pray, you know what? The hardest thing you'll ever do is pray. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you what, prayer is hard. Worship is easy. Worship, you know, everybody wants to go up there to worship, but nobody wants to go here to prayer. Everybody loves worship, but not everybody likes prayer. But I'm going to tell you what, prayer is the most important thing that you can do. Prayer taps into the presence of God. Prayer taps you into the blessings of God. Prayer, praise God. Try to go marry somebody you ain't ever talked to. You don't know nothing about them. But you know what? People say, oh, I love God, and they don't even know him. I'm going to say, God wants to know you. And how God knows you is in prayer, praise God. And prayer is so important. Prayer will, will help you be strong when temptation comes. You know why there's going to be a falling away in the last days? Because people don't pray. If you'll pray, you can stay. Praise God. There's a falling away. People giving up on God. People walking away from the truth. People walking away from the, the, from the church because they quit praying. But I'll tell you what, you'll not find anybody walking away from God praying. You'll not find anybody giving up on God when they pray. I'm telling you, look at your neighbor, tell them, I've got to pray better. I've got to pray better. Timothy, I want you to know one thing. Paul was a great man. Paul, just a shadow uh, and giving out handkerchiefs. People would get healed. People in prisons were praying through because Paul had a prayer life. Now here's Timothy. He's a young man trying to find his ministry, trying to find what God is going to do in his life. Anybody trying to find what God 
God's going to do in your life. Oh, I'm going to tell you. And Paul begins to tell him, you got to be careful, Timothy. I want you to know one thing. God's going to do a lot of things. I'm going to teach you a lot of things. But the first thing you got to remember, the first thing is prayer. Is prayer. Hallelujah. If you'll pray before things happen, you'll have a lot better outlook. But too many times we, we're crisis prayers. We had to have a crisis to make us pray. But I want to tell you, he said, listen, I want to warn you against false doctrines. I want to let you know about the word of God. I want you to know about love of God. I want you to know about the spirit. I want you to know about faith. I want to teach you about being pure. I want to tell you, don't neglect the gifts in you. To meditate on the things of God. Come on. Give yourself earnestly. Give yourself earnestly to God. Godliness. Get a hold of the value of godliness. I'm going to tell you here was Paul trying to teach him that, that listen all these things are important men lifting up holy hands women being modest men being modest and all these things <coughs> but he said the first thing is if I can't get you to pray none of these other things are going to happen you got to realize what hinges on prayer did you know your spiritual life, your physical life, your family life all hinges on prayer. It's which way you go. You can go to the left or you can go to the right. You can let loose or you can be strong. But it's all about prayer. And prayer is talking to Jesus. And you know what? The thing he wants, the enemy wants, to silence your voice. The enemy doesn't want you to pray. How many times you get down to pray and you fall asleep? How many times you get down and pray and it seems like it's hitting a wall? Because the enemy knows one thing. Because if you can get a hold of God, you'll let go of the enemy. And so, one more scripture I want to shoot at us today. Praise God. Hallelujah. It all hinges on prayer. And I, 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 and I want to let you know, in Leviticus 6 and 13, he said, The fire shall ever burn upon the altar. It shall never go out. Now, I want you to know today, the altar, the altar, the first piece of furniture you saw when you came into the tabernacle, to the tabernacle, of the wilderness was an altar. Now, God lit that fire and, and so I want you to know the altar's got to have fire. If people come to the altars bound, there's got to be something to help them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fire on the altar. Hallelujah. I said fire on the altar. Fire. God gives us fire. Praise God. He said you shall receive the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm going to tell you what friend when God gives you something that he wants you to take care of it. You see, in the temple, in that temple in the wilderness, they had an altar, and it had fire on it, and God brought the fire down, and God lit the fire. Then he said, listen, don't let it go out. Don't let it go out. You know what, friend? I can hear them words clear today. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go. Don't let my prayer life go out. Don't let my fire and my prayer go out. Don't let my walk with God go out. Come on. I'm going to tell you what, friend. The fire on the altar. Fire on the altar. And I'm going to tell you, hallelujah. A lot of people in our hour has lost their fire. They've lost the fire of God's prayer in their life. You know what? If you're going to burn up anything in your life and get rid of anything, you got to have some fire in your prayer life. The altar was also prayer. It was also a place of sacrifice. It was also a place of forgiveness. Praise God. And a lot of people don't want to deal with this part of the altar. They want to go around the altar. They don't want to forgive somebody. They don't even want to forgive themselves. I'm going to tell you what, friend. If ever you've got to get a hold of the altar, you've got to get a hold of it now. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. You know what? It'd be pretty sad to end up in hell because you wouldn't forgive somebody. 
Wouldn't that be silly to hang on to something? You know what? I'd rather die of it than to be condemned of it. Lay it on the altar. You know what? There needs to be healing. And we, we, do, we are human. And we do get wounds. And we do get bruises. And things do hurt us. And if you care it long enough, it'll kill you. That's what this altar's for. That's what this altar's for. Because, listen, he told me to cast all my care cares upon him for he cared for me and you know what and I'm sitting over here and I'm trying to hang on to what God wants me to let go of God you see I can't see it killing me I can't see it deficient de- to bringing me down but God can see what it's doing and God says lay it down God will not take nothing from you that you don't give up I've seen people hold on to hate and bitterness all the way to the grave. Mad at themselves. Anybody ever been mad at yourself? I can work on me. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, I don't need the devil to kill me. I can kill my own self. Yeah. Because, see, I, I remember what I do. That's why this altar's for. I gotta get this altar. And you know what? It's a sacrifice. You know what? When I pray it out, of, some things you gotta pray out of you. He said some things only go by prayer and fasting. Praise. How come we couldn't get it out of him? This kind, this kind. I'm gonna tell you, there's some this kinds out there. And they'll get in your heart. And they'll get in your spirit. And every time you try to get past your altar to get to another place in God, the enemy remind you where you're at. And you know what you need to do? You need to take the word of God and say, okay, devil, the Bible said to agree with the devil while you're in the way. You know what you say? Okay, devil, you know what? That's right. I got this in my heart. I'm going to get it out. I'm just going to repent of it. Repent. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to ask God to forgive me because, listen, i got to keep the fire burning on my altar. I can't let it go out. i got to be able to touch God in prayer. i got to be able to reach out to God in prayer. But this altar, this altar, you know what? If I don't lay, th- I wanted to bring a suitcase of things that I could put on the altar. But you know what? There's a lot of things in our spirit that we need bad attitudes a bad attitude to send you hell just as well as anything else yeah hatefulness bitterness finger pointing listen that's what the that's what the altar was for listen Oh, no, Brother Lambert, I want to go over here to worship. I want to go over here, and I, I, I just want to worship God. I just, you know what? God ain't going to receive that worship. He said, listen, when you get down and pray and you have all the you get up from there and you go to them. I ain't receiving anything you got till you go get things right. That's what this altar's for. Fire on the altar can't let it go out. I gotta have it in my high life. Hallelujah. My Lord, what I what I need to lay on this altar today. What a what what hurts that I've been hurt. You know what? It's one thing to be hurt because of what you did, but it's been another thing to be hurt what somebody else done to you. Sometimes that's a hard one to get over because somebody else done it to you. But you know what? The enemy wants to put out my fire. I gotta keep it burning. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. You know what? If if you, I'm going to tell you what, if you do not pray, you will not make it. He said that men ought to always pray and faint not. In other words, what he's saying, if you don't pray, you will faint. You will pass out. You will fall away. Yes, you have to see the importance. You've got to have a passion for prayer. You see, the world we live in is, is a different world than the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. It's a different world that, that we live in. We, we're living in a generation that is making war against God. We are living in a generation that wants God out of everything. God 
out of this, God out of that, fighting against God. There is coming a day, and it's not too far off, that, that they're going to come against the church. They're going to come against the, the preaching of God's word and say that it is hate speech. It, it is judgmental speech. And I'm going to tell you what, friend, we are quickly headed there. In fact, when you read in the book of Revelations, you find the armies of the world gathered to fight against God. You know what? They can bring out all their tanks and their nuclear weapons, but my God with his mouth, with his mouth, oh, with the sword of his mouth, I'm going to tell you what. And you've got to be careful in our hour because if you run with the dogs, what happens? You get tanks. And you've got to be careful. I don't think we realize the influence the world has on people. Listen to me. Listen. Daniel. Daniel was a young man when they took him away. 80 years in Babylon. 80 years. Think about it. Spent 80 years in Babylon. They, they took all the, the goodly people and brought them with them. It was thousands of them. But, you know, I found when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was standing up, he didn't mention anybody else. You know why? They decided not to eat from their king's table. You know what our danger is? Eating from their king's table. The father, they said, listen, let, let's, let's do a test. Let's, let, let us eat what we eat. Y'all eat what y'all eat. And at the end of it, let's find out who's the strongest. <clears throat> and they found out at the last that the ones that ate what God said to eat were much better, much stronger, much better complexion people. And the ones that ate from the other king's table were weak. What are you saying, Brother Larry? I'm saying this. If you eat from the things of this world and think that you're going to be spiritual and think that you're going to make it, I tell you what, you're going to faint. Because listen, the Bible said, if I can't run walk with the footman, how am I going to run with the horseman? If I have trouble walking with the footman, walking with the things of God, how? am I going to run? You listen to me today. Oh, the enemy wants you to know one thing. Don't worry about praying. Don't get a hold of God in prayer. Don't get in your prayer closet. Don't pray. Don't pray. Just believe in God to take it all. But I'm going to tell you what. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn you know what? It's one thing to seek God, but if you don't turn, you sought God in vain. Listen to me today. Seek my face and turn from thy wicked ways, and I, heal from, I hear from heaven, and I will heal you. You know, the healing part was no problem. The healing part was no, it wasn't no problem. It was the humbling. It was the praying. It was the turning. I find Lot... I was driving down the road, and God just dropped this, you know, a lot, lot. When you think a lot, one of the first things you think about is his wife turned to a pillow of salt. Remember Lot's wife. Remember about the homosexuals and things in that city. We remember about the fire and brimstone that God destroyed. We remember those things. But God dropped this in my heart and said, this is what happened. Well, we remember for them things. But remember for this. Lot lost his influence on the people, on his family. He lost the influence. And that's what you've got to be careful in our hour. Without praying, you lose, you lose the influence of God in your life. I, I, I remember I remember a young man going to see somebody who had the Holy Ghost. I, 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 got around, I, got, I got nervous inside. I felt something. I seen God in them, that influence. But then the only way you get that influence is having prayer. You've got to pray. It's, listen, you've got, to make, you've, got, you've got to make yourself pray till you get a passion for prayer. Do you got a passion for prayer? Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go pray my five minutes, Tim. You know what? 
You might have done all right five, ten minutes back in the 60s. 60s. You know what Jesus told them? He said, watch, you got to pray for one hour that you not enter into temptation. Well, why am I being so tempted in my hour? Why am I so tempted? Why are you so tempted? Because you don't pray. Because if you pray, you build up that resistance. You build up that power in God. And you see, when they came into the, the, tabernacle, the, the tabernacle in the wilderness. The altar was the first thing. The first thing's got to be prayer in your life. The first thing's got to be sacrifice in your life. You know what? Abraham gave, was giving up what he loved the most. We, we don't give up what we love the most. God asks us to give up things, but we love them too much to put them on the altar. You know what our failures are? That we begin to hold on what God doesn't love. And we love it. We don't let it go of it. You know what? When you, when you find that altar and you lay it down, God, I give it up. You know what? Some, some of you, I don't know if you're dealing with lust, but I'm going to tell you what. Lust takes out the, one of the strongest men, took out the wisest man. I'm a, if you put it on the altar, you've got to lay lust on the altar. You've got to lay pride on the altar. You've got to lay your will on the altar. I am not going to make it over there if I, I, if I stay on this side. i got to lay it on the altar. i got to die. Elton Lambert got to die. My will's got to die. What I want to do's got to die if I'm going to live for God. You cannot hang on to the world and hang on to God. That's like trying to tell two women you love them the most. Could you tell two men you love them the most? No, you can't. He said, you either for me are you against me? This altar, this altar. And the enemy wants to put out the fire. But God said, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Pray, pray in the spirit. What's that mean? You know what? Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. And they want, people want to come and say, well, speak in tongues of the devil. Well, you know what? You're saying what God set in motion is of the devil? No, listen. He said, he that pray in an unknown tongue is praying unto God and secretly. Yes, praise God. The Bible said that you shall speak with new tongues. I'm going to tell you what, listen. Yeah, there's times I pray in natural language, and there's times I pray in spiritual languages. Praise God. Sometimes I'm praying, and I don't know what I'm praying for, but the Spirit of God is making intercessory. Praise God. Oh, listen to me. I'm telling you, listen. You know, I, uh, prayer, it, it, it's got to be the main thing. The altar of God was, was seven feet, seven and a half feet wide and seven feet, half feet long and four and a half foot tall. It was the biggest. Prayer's got to be the biggest. Sacrifice has got to be the biggest thing in your life. Oh, the Bible said to present your body a living sacrifice. But you know what? It's easier to stay on this side and, and just blame everybody else for your problems. You know what? If you'll quit pointing fingers at everybody else and say, okay, God, I've carried this bitterness for so long. Bitterness don't make you better. Bitterness will turn into hate. You see, rules are one thing. You know, yes, there's rules in serving God. Yeah, God wants us to dress a certain way. God wants us to talk a certain way. God wants us to live a certain way. He does. <laughs> it's his rules. And it's at this altar will I submit my will to his rules. Lead me, Lord, I follow. 
anywhere you want me to go, God. Hallelujah. God, I need you. God, I need you. You know what? There's times in my life, you, 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 you don't know what it's like for your pastor to tell you, you you're, you're not called to preach, and, and you know you're called to preach. You don't know. But you know what? I had to get an altar and say, God, how do I be submissive to, to my pastor, but yet be hold to what you tell me God you know what God was doing God was trying to test me to see what I was going to do it had been easy to get a rebellion spirit it had been easy to rise up but you know what I did I went and prayed and I said God I know you called me but God you show him you called me you show him and you know what I didn't give devil nothing to work with I didn't go well my pastor ain't spiritual my pastor don't know anything you know all the times when your pastor does things you might not understand it sometimes you get mad you know what I got mad I did I, he didn't do it but one time he did it two times and I'm going to tell you what I, I, wanted to, I wanted to go and get my family and leave and not go back there but you know what I had a call on my life and if I couldn't listen to a man that, that's my pastor how can I listen to God and so I went back and I prayed and I cried and I died on the altar you know what friend too many people ain't dying at the altar they're not dying it's easy to get mad it's easy to get mad it's easy. mad is easy but you know what oh when I died at it God brought a man in that was an evangelist and called us something right in the front and said that we were called you know what friend you know what I felt my answer at the altar. I died at that altar. I said, Lord, God, you do it. God, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, but you know what? In our day and time, we want to fight, fight one another instead of finding a place at an altar. And so, the altar. Where's your altar? Where's your prayer life? How long? You pray five minutes? Do, do you come and just give God your grocery list? Is that what it is? Is, is that what God is? Just, here's my grocery list. Prayer is much more than that. Prayer is supping with him. Prayer is sharing with him. Prayer is talking to him. Now that's prayer. I sacrifice. And I want to ask you, what do you need to lay on this altar today? What's hindering your life too long? There was a time in my life when my daddy died. I was mad at God. Anybody ever been mad at God? 14 years old, mad at God. Me and two other boys at Bundix Lake, drinking beer, all underage. And every one of our daddies were died. And we're mad. Because I needed him. I don't know why God took him. But you know what? I made my mind up not to be mad at him. Because God's ways are not my ways. Listen, sometimes there's hard things in our lives that we don't understand. But you'll find your answer at the altar. God will meet you at the altar. That's why he said, come, let us reason together. Come on, let's talk, talk to me, talk to me. How many times you parents ask your kids to talk to you? Huh? Talk with me. Talk, come on. But that is the altar. If you get it right here, you can go to the next level. Anybody tired of this level? Anybody tired of living in guilt? You see, when you get on this side of the altar, oh, it feels much better. You know what? When David had sinned, David said, create in me a right spirit, O Lord. Clint, renew me. Cleanse me. He said, I don't know that you forgave. You know what? The enemy don't want you to realize that God forgave you. Come on. That's right. <laughs> this side. Then you come to the ladle. 
Now, it's got water in it. Tom was scared to sit on the front row today. He was scared because I have been known to throw water in a message. But you know what? You have to realize one thing. When you have repented of it, and you have died of it, and you've been forgiven of it, doesn't mean it's not still on you. You've got to be washed. You know what? A lot of people repent of it, they die of it, they get forgiven of stuff, but they still carry it. But you've got to be washed. Listen. Jesus was washing them, and Peter said, Oh, no, God! Oh, no, Lord! You'll never wash my feet! And the Lord said, Wait a minute, Peter. If you don't let me wash them, you have no part with me. Oh, no, I'll never get baptized. Oh, no, I'll never get baptized. See, see, you got to repent. you got you got to go first words. This, this is where it's at. Then you go to, to cleansing, cleansing, cl to wash it, to wash it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? He said, oh, don't only wash my hands. And wash my head to wash me all over God. When David messed up, he said, oh, God, listen, I messed up. Forgive me. But God, don't stop there. Cleanse Cleanse me. Cleanse me. I'm going to tell you what. God will forgive you. God will cast it away. But there's got to be some cleansing too. You know what? Baptism. You know what it's all? Y'all, it's for, for the, your conscience. It's for your mind. God don't want you walk around feeling guilty for what you've done. You've got to wash it away. If I went outside and played in the dirt all day long comes the time you gotta get it off and so you see that's what this was for and, and, and people don't understand listen I gotta be cleansed I gotta be baptized I gotta be washed that's 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 what the baptistry is for and, and and you know what if you, you repent, if you don't repent and you don't pray you'll never get that cleansing <laughs> you ever heard somebody say oh, I, feel, I feel so dirty you know what? I got to take care of this so I can get to here. I'm going to tell you what. <clears throat> it was January. It was cold weather. I'm going to tell you what. And we got the Holy Ghost. And we was going to get baptized. And the baptistry wasn't the very cleanest baptistry was. But I didn't care. You know what? When you come out of a dirty world, you don't care. When you come out of guilt and shame and all that, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. I wanted to be baptized. They stirred it all up. I got my in it and I almost changed my mind it felt like ice water but you know what I've lived in a sinner's life long enough I had to have a chain you know what and I went down in that baptistry oh hallelujah I went down I had I still had all that guilt and stuff on me yeah God forgave me I had to get it washed away I about, they put me down and when I came out of that water I'm going to tell you what I was a different man I was a different person because listen it wasn't sticking to me any longer it wasn't on me any longer you know what friend listen to me you can't just stop here you just can't well I repented well that's fine but he said repent and be baptized every one of you I'm going to tell you what oh you, you, you don't want to be baptized he said, as many that are buried with me. That's what I'm doing. I'm being buried with him. And I rise in him to newness. My Lord, the things I once loved, I didn't love no more. And one of the things I used to hate, I loved. The things of God was important to me. You know what? If God's not important to you, you're in a terrible place because you got to put God first. It's God. It's God in my life. It's no more Elton Lambert. It's God. And so, repentance. We're going to make it to a little further. Praise God. And so, I want you to realize one thing. All of this was on the outside. Right here, I, I didn't have another curtain. 
But right here is the tent where a tent started. Out here was a the lay, the cleansing, the forgiveness. If you never get to this part, you'll never enter to the next part. And so what? Inside, there's no windows. There's no windows. There's nothing. The only light there is is from the candlestick. Where do you think the fire came to light the candlestick? From off the altar. Did you hear me? Off the altar. Because this fire is a holy fire. Praise God. You know what? You know why people don't have no light in their life? They don't get the fire off the altar. You know what? The fire had to come off the altar to light the candlestick. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, because it wasn't just any fire. It wasn't just any fire. It was off the altar. It's off your prayer life. Oh, my goodness. It's off your prayer life. Does your prayer life have any fire in it? Oh, it's leaking. That's okay. Did I? Oh, my goodness. Don't let it go out. Don't let it go out. So here we are. We come in. And we're inside the tent. And there's the candlestick of light. The light was there for a reason. Can you imagine trying to find the bread without the light? It's dark in here. We're in a dark world. He said, I am the light of the world. Walk in the light. Live. You got to live. And God is that light. And so here's the light in the tent. Can you imagine trying to feel around? People say, well, I just don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what? Won't you put, let God put some light in your life? Won't you let some light come in? Praise God. Let that light, that candlestick, that golden candlestick. I can see clearly now. I can see the bread now. I can see the way now. You know, a lot of people say, well, I, I just don't see that in the bar. I don't see that in the Bible. You know what? You ain't got the light on it. Because the light came from the prayer, from the sacrifice, from the forgiveness over there that lit the candle. You know what? You'll never see anything if you don't let the fire off the altar. And the bread, and the bread, and the bread. You know what? Here's the bread. And it called for 12 loaves. But I, I didn't want to put 12 loaves up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The bread, the bread. Oh, hallelujah. You know what, friend? The Bible said that man can't eat bread alone. I, I got to have bread. I got to have the bread of the Spirit. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily. It's got to be a daily thing. You know what? I, I just don't understand the Bible. I just don't understand what God's saying in the world. I don't understand what the Bible says. I tell you why. Because you ain't got the light. You know, you got to have the light. You got to have prayer. Sometimes you got to have prayer and reading that Bible to understand it. Praise God. People say, well, it's, no, the Bible is spiritual. It's a spiritual book. It's a live book. It's not a dead book. And you know what? It's bread. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the bread of life. You know what? The enemy don't want us to eat the word of God. He wants us. We have Bibles in our front room. We have Bibles in our bedroom. We got Bibles everywhere. But you know what? You have a Bible in every room and it won't do you any good unless you pick it up. We got Bibles on our phone. We got iPads. We got this kind of pad. But you know what, friend? Oh, hallelujah. David said it this way. Thou word have I hid in my heart that I don't sin against you, Lord. You know what? If you don't take that word of God, and the word of God will rub you, and the word of God will be sandpaper to you, and the word of God will shape you, and it'll make you. But you know what? If you ain't got no light off your candle, off your altar, Altar, the light, the, the candlestick in your life. You'll never want to eat the bread. If I'd ask you, who read your Bible this week? Didn't even think about it. Oh, I know what God wants from me, but I don't read His Word. How how do you know Him? 
How, how can you know somebody you don't even read about, don't even pray to, and you say you love him? That, that, that would even stand enough evidence to stand up in a court of law. They was laughed at you and said, wait a minute. You say you know him, but you don't know his, read his word. You, you, you love him, but you don't talk to him. Listen, the tabernacle, it's all set up. It lets us know, listen, if we ever going to get presence of God. If we're going to find that place in God, we got to have repentance. We got to have sacrifice. We got to have forgiveness. We got to have prayer. We got to be cleansed. We got to have some light. You see that? Uh, when, when God put his spirit in it, it put light in me. Uh, hallelujah. I can see now. I can see what the word of God says. Uh, you know what? People that don't know what the word of God says, they go off of what somebody else says. Did you hear me? Well, my uncle said it this way. You know what? I don't care what man says. I don't care what God says. If God says a duck is a duck, it is a duck. Huh? Man, and listen to me. I, there are so many translations out there. And every translation is taken a little bit more away from what God says. <laughs> then finally, you can hold up the King James and you can hold up the New World Translation and it don't even talk what they're saying, about, talking about the same thing. But they say, oh, I can understand it now. No, listen to me. You're not understanding what I'm saying because, listen, the, the Word of God is when you look into it. And God reveals himself to you. Listen, if, if you're not hungry for God, that's why the, the, the Bible, the Word of God is like bread. You got to be hungry for God. I came to God. I was so hungry. I, I want to know truth. I, I, I don't want to know what so-and-so said. or what so, God, I don't care what you want me to do, how you want me to live. God, I don't care, God. This ain't let's make a deal, God. I'm here, God, because I'm broken. I'm here because I was lost. I'm here because I was prisoned by the enemy. And God, I know what you done. You set me free at altar. You broke the chains at my altar. You gave me truth at that altar. You cleansed me at that baptism. And you think I'm going to come to the word of God and pick and choose what I want? Just because I don't like it don't mean it still ain't true. Now, sometimes it hurts the word of God. hurts you. It's sharper than a, it, it's a two-edged sword. Listen, we don't mind it cutting one it cutting somebody else. We don't like it cutting us. We don't like it accusing us of being a hypocrite. Huh. I said, we don't like it when we look. You see, when you look, they didn't have mirrors back then. And they had to look into the, there to see what they looked like. You know what? When you see who you are, really. When I looked in the mirror a long time ago and saw who I was, I hated who I was. But now I can look and say, God. You're still working on me. I know I'm not where I need to be, but I'm a long ways from where he found me. Praise God. But you know what? The more I eat of his word, the more I eat of him. Oh, taste and see that he's good. My goodness, the more I understand holiness. He said, without holiness, no man shall see God. Without, listen, I don't care. Listen, I don't care if God wants me to put me a sack on my head and call me a beanbag. Because, listen, I've already died of who I was. I buried that old boy. The old man's dead. And you know what? I found out how good it is. I don't care what I got to do. You know what? People say, well, Pentecost is it's just too hard. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'd rather live hard for God instead of easy for God. Listen. I'm going to ask you this. Would you want a doctor operating on you that, that missed 90% of his classes? Huh? Would you want that? Oh, I, I only got there two days, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a doctor. But yet, we want to 
We want to lighten up on the things of God. Listen, I, I'd rather get to heaven. God said, well, hey, buddy, I appreciate you giving it all like that, man. You get. Instead of get to heaven, God said, boy, you live really lightly for me. You didn't, you didn't give it all. But this word, this word, heaven and earth is going to pass away. This bread, this bread. You know what? Went from house to house, breaking bread, breaking bread. Oh, praying, breaking bread, praying. You know what, friend? When's the last time you broke some bread? Come on, when's the last time you got in that Bible? And, and you prayed over it and God opened up a new new scripture to you opened up revelation to you gave you knowledge of it praise God you know what and, uh, pray, uh, ignorance he said I, God winked at it at one time yeah God did it at one time he winked at it but now but now he ain't going to wink at it there's no reason to be ignorant there's no reason uh, I'm going to tell you what uh, the word of God he, he, it's out there and, and if you don't get a hold of it it's your own fault Brother Ivy said he loves fresh bread. You know what? People don't pray, don't have fresh bread. Preachers that don't pray don't have fresh bread. Yeah. Isn't it funny? We used to have a bread house in DeRitter's, wholesome bread, and there's all their old bread. And we learned how to take old bread and put it in microwave and make it new bread. Yeah. But you had to eat it while it was hot because if it got back hard, cold, it was hard again. It was worse. But see, that's what people want to do. They want to do it some other way. He said, if you kill any other way, you come same as a thief and a robber. You know what? what what's wrong having fresh bread? What's wrong eating the things of God, feeling good about yourself, being happy, praise God, hiding that word. You know why, you know why people sin? It's not because of the devil, because they don't pray and they don't read their Bible. Bread, give me this bread. Bread, got to have some bread. Bread, fresh bread, fresh bread. Bread! Anybody want to roll? Anybody want to roll? Anybody want, anybody want a blessing? Anybody want victory? Anybody want a healing? Come on! Anybody want it? Come on, you got to want it. My Lord, there ain't a time I went to Lambert's and got a roll with my hands down. I didn't get no roll with my mouth closed, but they call it hard bread. I said, yeah, I want some. And it come flying to me. It come flying to me. My Lord, got to get up in the sound room. What's wrong? with me I need some more strength Ma, get up there fresh bread fresh bread get it on the drums fresh beat fresh singing fresh prayer fresh 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 no dead church no dead saints no dead preaching no dead stuff I still got more bread praise God you know what I love the word of God. Forsake not yourselves assembling together as some do. You know what? I've got to be there. Because, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. This bread, this bread. Oh, hallelujah. This water being thirsty. Yes. Glory to God. <clears throat> I'm going to put my bell on that back door. Every time somebody goes, I don't know it. Praise God. bread gotta have some bread brandy gotta have some bread you know what hallelujah the old devil says well you got cancer why don't you let him know you got bread you got word you got word you got promise you got spirit you got an altar you got prayer praise God come on come on don't walk around here like I ain't got Get it in your hand. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. My goodness. Isn't it crazy that the doctor says you're sick and you believe him and God says you're healed and you don't even believe it? You know why? Because the devil stole your light. He's blown your light. 
out and you can't find the bread and you can't find the answer and you can't find the truth and you can't find the way. Yeah. But if you want bread and the enemy's blowed your light out, go back to the altar. I failed you, God. You know what? You got too much pride to say, you know what? See, I backslid when I was 16. A backslider has a harder time to come back to God. So I got to go eat all the stuff they said. See, the prodigal son had a problem. He went as far as away as he could. He had a long way to walk back. People used to say, you better put some sugars on them words, baby, because you're going to have to eat them one day. Yeah. Oh, I'll never be a Pentecostal. <laughs> well, you know what? That's just a name. I'm, I'm biblical. I'm Bible. It ain't the name you put on your church that makes it. It's what you get at this altar, prayer, and the experience with God. Yeah. Anybody ever got tripped up? You see, the hardest thing about me when I backslid is to forgive me. But you know what? I had to go back and get that fire back. And I, you know what? See, I couldn't see what the Word was telling me. I couldn't understand what, the, you see, you got to have the Spirit of God that teaches and guides you in all truth. So I had to get my light back in my candle room. So I could see God. Oh God, I want to see you again in my life. God, I want to see you in my prayer, God. God, I want, I want you to know when I pray, God, when I pray for my lost loved ones, God, I know that you're working. God, you're working. You're, 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 like, you're the light in my path, God. You direct my footsteps, God. Oh, God. Oh, I don't stumble when I have the light. I got to walk in the light. I got to live in the light, God, so I can take my bread. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my bread. Tom, Monday morning, take your bread to work with you. Don't leave it at home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brittany, when you go work out, take that bread with you. Praise God. Them people are hurt. Them people need truth. They need to know. Take your bread with you. Don't leave home without it. Oh, God. Got to have my bread. Fresh bread. Got to have some bread. Come on. Come on. I'll give you. You drop your bread. Pick it up. Praise God. It's still a three-second. It's still a three-second law. Praise the Lord. Get that bread. Come on. Got to get that bread. God loves you. Hallelujah. Got to have bread. Bread. Got to have some bread. Woo! Got to have some bread. I still got some bread. My, we're blessed. We're still blessed. You know what? You know what? Men try to do away with the word. But it just keeps on growing. I can see clearly now. Oh. Oh no, oh no, my, isn't it making a mess? That's all right, you know what? When you get the word of God out, it's going to cause some trouble. It's going to put the enemy on the run. You're going to realize who you are, praise the Lord. I got to get rid of this bread. I got to get rid of my Lord. I got to get that bread. Come on. Woo. You want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Come on, that's it. Do you want it? Grab it, grab it, grab it. Hallelujah. I'm going to save this bread for my son that's lost. Because listen, I am not going to be none effect in my hour. The Bible said be always ready to give a word account for what you have. If someone come to the music today. We're going to finish this other part tomorrow, tonight. Tonight. I might have to go back through repentance again. 
you know, see, that's the problem. You've got to build your life on a foundation of repentance. Because, see, I might not be sinning by doing wrong, but I might be sinning not, not what I'm doing for God. The Bible said for to know to do good. Do you know how to do good? Do you know how to do mean? <laughs> we all know how to do mean. Yeah. Hey, you get some dolls and some cow coats and some Lamberts and some Johnsons and some Gills. Listen. Picking ain't the same. They'll fight one another till you come, then they'll get together and fight you. <laughs> we know how to do bad. I know how to be so mad at you and still shake your hand and act like I like you. I could do, people can do that. But you see, it's not true. Repentance. When you forgive somebody, you let it go. Don't say this, well, I'm going to remember them. I forgive them, but I remember. Look, no. if we have the attributes of Jesus, he put them in a sea of forgiveness. It's all new. But you let somebody walk by that done something. But you know what? I'm trying to make it to the presence of God. I'm trying to make it there. I want to feel God. I want to touch God. But I got to I got to I got to get right. I don't feel God, Brother Lambert. You know what that tells me? You're not right with him. I got I, I to gotta, I gotta do my first works. Or he said, if any man fall away to renew him back to the found. That's first works, repentance, repentance, forgiveness, and pray. How, how did I get the Holy Ghost the first time I prayed? I cried. I, I asked forgiveness. I asked God to take it all away. God, whatever you want, God. I got to love you, God. And in my mind, I was saying hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But with my tongue, I began to speak in another language. There was nobody in my ear saying, Ty, Ty, see my tie. But it was my heart and my soul crying out, I need you, God. I am so lonely. I'm so cold. I'm so lost. God. Let that altar. I surrendered. I told God, I'm not leaving out of here without you, God. I'm not leaving out of here. And you know what? God showed up. And I didn't leave out of that prayer room that I made an altar. Bread. The world's hurting. Dan Daniel, how did you make it, Daniel? How did you make it living in Babylon? How did you do it? I prayed three times a day. You know what? Even though Daniel was in Babylon, Babylon wasn't in him. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Come ye out from the world and be ye separate and touch no unclean thing. And I, I receive. You 
You're going to receive me, Lord. You're going to receive me. As we all stand today, the tabernacle of prayer. Don't you love yourself enough to pray? Or don't you love yourself enough to pray to God for Him to love you back? I was preparing and I felt like God said, listen, there's going to be people that have hurts that are hidden so far down. Wounds that are not healed. Hearts that are hurting. If I could tell you anything today, God's waiting to at the altar with you. Pull it out. I'm not going to be mad no more. I'm not going to live with the tormentor any longer. I'm not going to be depressed because of past. God, I give you what's left of me. It's broken. It's bruised. Lord, if you could use anything, can you use me? Do you still love me? Do you still love me? Do you still love me, Lord? I ran, I hid, I did wrong things, but do you love me? And the Lord says, I love you. As they begin to sing today, I know it's crowded around up here, but, or if you can turn your pew, your chair into a place to pray. Tonight, yeah, we're going to talk about this place. I got a lot. I got a lot in the world. A house of prayer. Got kids that are lost. You got family that's going to go to hell. What are you going to do? You got family on drugs. The enemy running rapidly in their life. Who's going to be a light barrier? Who's going to have a light to shine? Who's going to be the witness? Who's going to tell them? Who's going to give them bread? Who's going to help them find the way? Who's going to lead them?
to say just get in your Bible and start praying the word when you don't pray you become easy offended and when you get offended it pushes you away then you become paranoid about everything around you. That all of a sudden the enemy puts you in victim mode instead of victory mode. But if I stay around this altar, I'm, I'm not perfect. There's times that I think, what's wrong with you? There's times Times I wonder, how did I get here? But then I find me a place to pray. We used to have a sign in our old church. Three little kittens going to pray. But they came back with three lions. Prayer will strengthen you for the battle. This is where Paul said, fight a good fight of faith. <laughs> this is where the battle's at. It's not there. It's not there. This battle right here is when you fight principalities and powers and rulers of dark and you fight yourself. get past this I'm headed to glory (laughs) 
lot of people get forgiveness and they stop there. But the Bible said, go on to perfection. There's higher heights and there's deeper depths. And if you'll come back tonight, we're going to go through some deeper depths. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did I lose my bread? That don't look like my bread. Oh, did I? Somebody's breaking bread around here. <laughs> I see evidence somebody's been breaking bread. <laughs> I see evidence somebody's been changing. <sighs> oh. Well, I'll tell you what. These must be mine. I'm going to take this to my son. Who knows? He might be here tonight. After I take my belt off and put him in a headlock and tell him I am still your daddy, then I'm going to give him this bread. Now, my black eye. Sometimes when you give bread, the enemy will fight you. Well, I'm through. I didn't stop as abruptly as I did the other night. I had to stop real fast the other night because my mouth was wanting to keep going. Amber said, is everything okay? She had never seen her pastor cut off a message like that. Listen. It even scared me. <laughs> she said, did you see something in somebody's face? I said, no. I said, I had to stop because I wanted to keep going. Do you need a fresh word? Do you need a fresh promise? Praise God. It is so good to have our visitors here today. Hallelujah. I tell you what. Let God not be a visitor. Let God be a permanent thing in your life. The answer is not in the world ain't got your answer. You know what? Even Budweiser ain't got your answer. This awoke generation... You know what they're doing? They are trying to erase their the history and then they're going to start erasing God out of everything. Then we're going to find a sign that says to the unknown God. Hmm. Well, I'm hush ushers coming on up today. Well, you know what? Maybe there's still some 20s out there. <laughs> I forget we take the offering up a different time now. Praise God, but uh, ushers don't come. Oh, yeah, today is, is a special day for my wife. <laughs> come on up here, baby. This is called Honey Day. Mm. Praise God. You need a microphone? It's her birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you. I told him, I said, she might be 61. She still kisses like she's 16. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh. Here, baby, I got some bread. <laughs> now, listen, this is, this is bread. Now, this is the word. For me to love you as Christ loved the church. And he gave himself. Here I am, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Peace God. 61. Let's sing happy birthday to her. You know how to play it? Wait, come over here. Well, I'll play it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all want to help me? Praise God. 
Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And the best year you ever had. Uh, that was a special key. I, I prayed in a special key. I, pray, I play in low, so low you can't hear it. <laughs> All right, praise God. I'll hush up and turn my mic off. Come back tonight. Let's see what's happening.